We inspired a nation. We brought everybody together. Women's football is, is massive. So I started playing football um, at a very young age. I've got brothers, um, so it was kind of like a no-brainer. Yeah, I either joined in or the ball got kicked at me anyway, so I kind of chose to join in and that's kind of where my playing style comes from a little bit with the rough and tumble and always being within competition with your siblings. Growing up, my parents were a massive influence on me. They are both sporty, they're both competitive as well, so it was kind of like within my nature that I had to go into something sporty. Yeah, they just gave up so much in order for me to fulfill fulfill my dream whether it would be successful or not that didn't matter to them because they just knew that my love was with football and they were willing to yeah give up their time and their money and everything that they'd done their freedom um, in order for me to yeah fulfill my dream and I think that's really important to me and yeah that was massively influential and kind of the reason why today I want to be successful because I also want to be able to give back to them and tell them that it's worth it. Probably at quite a young age, just because I was playing in and around the boys and the boys are usually much better than you, um, physically and technically and, and with the ball and stuff. It was kind of one of them where I played the opposition and at first they'd be like, oh, there's a girl on that team. And then within a few minutes, they'd be applauding you and they'd, at the end of the game, they'd be saying, great game. And I think from that, I kind of knew that I was half decent. And then it was probably only until maybe the latter stages at my time at Blackburn Rovers, so nearer towards, yeah, probably 15, 16 years old, that I then realised that I could go and play professionally and that was something that I wanted to go and do. Just because I was in and around the Youth England setup, playing at um, Blackburn Rovers' first team at the age of 16, and then obviously got the move to Manchester City. So that was kind of, yeah, a pivotal moment. So I first got into the England setup at the age of, yeah, it was like 13, 14 years old at under 15 level. And I remember there being an upcoming game. Um, so we got told at like a, a regional camp, which was like where Cumbria comes together, Lancashire comes together. We got told that there was a game coming up and that there'd be an opportunity to get like selected. Like the email will come out on this day. And I got the email just as school finished. I would usually get on the bus to go home and I was that excited that I ran up the biggest hill in town to my granddad's house at the top. I burst through the front door, told my granddad. Granddad was stay, straight in the car driving me home. And yeah, I remember stopping off at a few places to tell different people that I'd got my first England call up to the under 15. So yeah, that day will stick with me um, for a very long time. And then obviously as you progress through the age groups, you then think that it will be possible to break through to the seniors. Every single England manager will tell you that one person out of each age group will make it. I had it in my mind that I was going to be that one person and no matter who told me that I wasn't going to make it or who told me that it was going to be tough, I knew in the back of my mind that I wanted to be that one person and fortunate enough that, yeah, maybe eight people from our age group are now in the seniors and yeah, a lot of us will be traveling over this summer. So yeah, I think it's unbelievable that everybody had the same mindset and everybody wanted to be that one player. Uh, my first day at the seniors um, was very surreal. I remember being on standby. It, this was like my first camp. I was on standby and we was playing Chelsea at the weekend. I didn't start, so I was obviously really disappointed. And then I managed to get subbed on mid second half and I scored um, and we drew the game 2-2, I think it was. Like I got in the car to go home. We had a few days off um, because I wasn't going away with national team camp. Just stopped off at the petrol station, had a pick a mix on my knee. And then I had um, an unknown number phone me and I would never usually answer, but I think because my dad was in the car, I was like, okay, I'm pretty safe if it's a stranger then I can pass it to my dad and yeah he can be the baddie but I answered and it was yeah it was Phil Neville um, and he said obviously due to some circumstance we've had um, a player drop out we'd love to welcome you um, into the seniors and travel with the to us with, to the she believes and I was like dad turn around like got to go back home need to pack my suitcase so I think the girls had met up a little bit earlier but obviously I was delayed because I was too busy getting my pick and mix so we turned around packed my case and headed off to Heathrow airport where I met the girls but I was fortunate enough that 10 other players were at City already so I kind of knew them um, and yeah it was just a matter of getting around the rest of them and yeah just saying hi I think winning the Euros was unbelievable winning it topped it off but I think even if we'd have lost that final we'd have still had the same impact that we did on everybody we inspired a nation we brought everybody together yeah I think people really found a love for the women's game and obviously you can see from the statistics of fans walking into games how much it's increased women's football is is massive the Euros was a, a real turning point of that and as of course we want people to jump on the bandwagon but I think it's extra special that people have stayed with us no so I had some um really 
important female figures um, within my life. Obviously, you talk about your parents, but a real um, figure in my career was somebody at Blackburn Rovers. She's called AJ, so she took me on from day one, signed with me and then was with me right until yeah I left Blackburn at 16 and was so supportive in everything that I did, every step that I took. And yeah, she's somebody that I've still got a really good relationship with now. I think going into the World Cup, the fans are going to be so important. Yeah, maybe more important than ever because we're so far away. We want to try and build the fan base back here as much as we can, just to know that people are still watching, making sure that it's on the TV, making sure that people are still aware of exactly what we're doing, which I think will most definitely happen. There's people already walking through town saying, good luck in the summer, good luck at the World Cup. So I feel like it's really nice to be recognised for the right reasons and re recognised for the fact that the Lionesses are doing things within, yeah, the environment. This summer will just be completely different to last summer. I feel like you can't compare, you've just got to be open-minded to a completely new experience. Australia in itself will be unbelievable, the country's um, amazing. Yeah, their football culture is also so special. We just have to start fresh, start the tournament again, focus on each game as it comes, focus on what we want to achieve um, and yeah, kind of set the plan out exactly how we did in the Euros and hopefully it'll go to plan. But at the same time, we understand that yeah, every women's team's rocketing at the moment. It's easier to say no expectations because we want to just enjoy it as much as we can. Yeah, off the back of the Euros, hopefully we can continue with the momentum. Mm -hmm.